family welcome to church online so good to see you today it's sunday we know it's going to be a great day if you're watching on facebook or youtube or instagram would you mind taking a couple seconds and share the feed with your friends and family the reason for that is that we want everyone that you love everyone that you know to hear this incredible message from god uh, message of hope message of love and uh, it's going to be a great service as always we have an inspiring sermon inspiring worship and uh, just want to pray for you really quick lord jesus thank you for this day i pray that whoever's watching behind the screen that you speak to them that you bless them and that they connect with you lord like never before and that their lives are changed and transformed in jesus name all right church have a great service What is up, Grace family? We are so glad you're here with us. Good morning, happy Sunday. My name is Joy. And I'm Jordan. It's so great to have you guys here today. It's spring and I'm loving this oh weather. Oh my gosh, oh my the goodness. sunshine, it is great. It is beautiful. 
Depending on where you're at, if you are in yes. sunshine or still in snow, maybe you like the snow, comment where you're at. Let us know where you're joining us from. Yes, Jordan is going to Florida and I'm kind of jealous, but we've had some viewers from Florida, so Kevin. Maybe they're joining in. Excuse me, sorry. <laughs> Kevin, we're so glad you're watching here with us. Hey, Kevin, what's going on? Lachelle, good morning. And I, it looks like Mariah, but with an S. And I know that's not right. Maris, Marissa? Marissa? Marisha? 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 I don't know. Welcome. Good morning. <laughs> if, you, if, if you are joining us still, uh, you know how you like put your name and you like phonetically sound it out? Oh, Do yeah. That. We would love to be able to pronounce your name That'd accurately. <laughs> you can also comment any prayers, any questions that you have. Calvin, um, one of our pastors, is actively watching. So if you guys have prayers, make sure you put those in so we can pray over you guys as a church. Yeah. So a great resource for this weekend is our online bulletin. I think there's a QR code popping up. Um, but if you want to give that QR code a scan, it's filled with all kinds of resources, um, information about what's going on around the church, and then also notes about um, what Pastor Carl's talking about today. Um, and it's a great and easy free resource to stay connected and yeah. know what's going on. I believe you can also tithe through that. You guys are yeah. amazing with your tithes. It allows oh us goodness. to do so many things at the church. It allows us to do so much outreach. There are like outreach programs through Grace Kids. Um, so we just want to thank you for your generosity in that. Um, and we know God is talking to you and how you tithe. And um, we just appreciate you. So if you are feeling led to tithe today, you can do it through that QR code as well. Yeah, Growth Track is today. If you yes. haven't gone through Growth Track, I 110% recommend it. So Growth Track is a series of three classes um, where we discuss um, grace and what our mission is about and the things that we do, and then also how to get plugged in into the church body. Um, so it's a series of three classes and it starts tonight at 6 p.m. Um, and you can still register for that. Dinner and childcare are provided and yes. we'd love to see you there. Yeah, Growth Track is amazing. That's actually how me and my husband got started at the church. I remember. That. Yeah, that's crazy. We had started. We went to the very first growth track, and it was four weeks back then. Yeah, um, but it was such an amazing resource. You get to know all of the staff. You get to meet new people, and like Joy said, it's a great way to get connected. Uh, we didn't really know where to start or where to fit in. And we got connected with youth and Grace Kids, and and now she's here. We are. <laughs> we're so glad she's here. So, so I'm you glad you're know. here too. <laughs> But Another amazing thing coming up is baptism. Oh my gosh, Let me yes. tell you, baptism is one of my favorite weekends ever. So April 20th and 21st, you can register for that on the website through the Grace, the Grace, the Grace the, website. The, <laughs> What's or through the church center app. Church center, that's the word. I was like, I know it's something church. <laughs> but if Sorry. God is calling you to take that next step in obedience, make sure you do that. Or if you know a family member who's doing it, I believe we're live streaming all of the services yeah. so you're able to watch them. So you can always tune in this way too. Or you could just come. Or enjoy. you can come in person. I mean, it's always a fun, it really amazing is. weekend. It's an exciting atmosphere. You can feel God in the room and just feel the power of like chains being broken and people just super excited to walk in what God is asking them to. In so freedom. it's really cool. It's so fun to celebrate what God's yes. doing. Um, ladies, If Gathering 2024 is coming up. Let's go. Not February. April. Jeez, <laughs> where is my brain? Sorry. April. <laughs> April 26th and 27th. Um, registration closes on the 22nd, but um, we're going to be looking at who Jesus is and how he's the light of the world. Um, and I was able to go to the live event and it changed my life. That's and awesome. I'm so excited for what God's up to. So ladies, all ages, all walks of life, you're invited and you can register for that on Church Center as well. Yes. And food is provided, I believe, too. Oh, yeah. Good food is provided. Good food. Let's go. Yes. So, yeah, make sure you register for that because that's an awesome women's event. So, okay, so I was logging into Planning Center the other day. Okay. And I couldn't remember my password, so I asked my dad if he remembered it. Okay. And he said, it's Mickey, Minnie, Goofy, Donald, Pluto, Huey, Louie, Dewey, Dublin. And I was like, what the heck, Dad? Why did you set it as that? And he said, he told me that his password had to contain eight characters. Oh, my gosh. And at gosh. least one capital. <laughs> Awesome. That is awesome. I love it. And I'm a huge Disney fan, so like that fills She's my wearing, soul. Can we zoom in? She's no. wearing stitch <laughs> earrings, guys. We're She's preparing for my trip to Florida. Literally the coolest person I know. <laughs> Speaking of uh, vacation, I had a Hawaiian oh, yeah. pizza last night and I burnt it. I was thinking about it and I realized I should have put it on a Aloha setting. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 
That's a good one. Okay. I like that one. Anyways. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So, podcasts. Podcast. We have a podcast. We do. We do. New episode this Thursday. I think it's episode four. Ooh. If you haven't heard the first three, you should check them out. They're amazing. Yes. Sarah, our marriage and family pastor, leads them, and she's done an insane job she of has. giving us tools and resources for family, marriage, and life in general. Yes. Um, but it sounds like service is about to get started. Oh, we've got a nice full room going on yeah, here. Yeah, it's But exciting. there is still room for you, so you have time to make it. I believe in you. Just don't go over the speed limit. Don't get in trouble. There you go. <laughs> Well, we would love to see you here or at the 11 a.m. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We hope you guys enjoy the service. And don't forget to share the post, share the stream, and put any prayers in that you have. Thank you, guys.
what you did for us on the cross. Thank you for what you do for us on a daily basis. We just praise you right now. In your name we pray, amen. You guys can have a seat. Welcome to Grace this morning. It's great to see you here. Hey, middle school students, you are released to go to your small group. Your small group leaders will meet you out in the Welcome Center and they're looking forward to spending some time with you. Thank you so much for your continued faithfulness, your generosity when you tithe. It ripples far out into our community and as you'll hear in just a second into our world as well. So we just thank you for your faithfulness in that way. If you'd like to tithe today, there's a number of ways you can do that. You can give either through the Church Center app, through Grace's website, or in person at the boxes that are by the auditorium doors when you leave. So thank you so much. Hey, this evening, Growth Track kicks off. It's a series of three classes. We'll meet Sunday evenings for three weeks where we get to spend some time with you guys, get to know you, for you to get to know who we are as a church. And so this is a great place if you're new to Grace to come and find out that information, but also if you've been around for a while and you've been thinking, hey, there's gotta be more, more to the body of Christ than just coming on a Sunday. How can I get more connected and find out what my purpose is? We would love to have you as well. So we'll have dinner together. We have childcare, so all of that is covered. We just ask that you register so that we are prepared for you to come. So we hope that you'll join us for Growth Track. And then women, if gatherings coming here in a couple weeks. So pay attention to the videos as we give you some more information about them. This year, our theme at IF is because of Jesus. So much is happening in our world and we know that the hope and the joy and the peace that we have is because of Jesus. And we wanna invite the world into that. In fact, this year at IF, we are going to go live all around the world. In the past, we've reached over 176 countries and you are the reason why. So we're gonna look at the moments of Jesus' life and remember how sweet and dear he is. When life gets chaotic, it is so good just to set your eyes on him. And so our theme verse this year is simply John 8, verse 12. I am the light of the world. We are going to look at the light of the world. We are gonna celebrate the light of the world the light that brings hope, that brings peace, that brings comfort, that brings a future. And the verse goes on to say, whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And we know that that means not in our circumstances. Our, our circumstances can be dark, and yet we still walk in the light. There is hope because of Jesus. So come be a part of this story with us. Do not miss it. We want you to invite the people that know God, the people that don't. We want you to bring them into your homes, into your churches, into your dorm rooms, and we want to see God move in the women of our generation. Hey ladies, we want to invite you to IF Gathering 2024 here at Grace Montrose. And let me tell you, in the last eight years of doing the IF Gathering, this is the best one yet. Yes, I agree. This year's IF Gathering will be April 26th and April 27th. Registration closes April 22nd, so be sure you get registered. We will not have one next year, so this is the one you want to attend. Yeah, you guys can register for it on Planning Center through the Church Center app, and it's for ladies of all ages, all walks of life. We want you there. Um, we were able to go to the IF Gathering in Texas a few months ago, and let me tell you, God changed my life, and I know He wants to change yours too. So come join us and let's be changed by Jesus. All right, yeah, don't miss out on that. That's gonna be a powerful, powerful time for our ladies. Wanna encourage you to get registered soon. Um, before we jump into the sermon, uh, we have our good friend Yiji here. Yiji and Cassie uh, have, were sent out from this church about five years ago. Uh, he's too humble to say so, but he just, he's a crew and he keeps getting promoted uh, to higher and higher positions. I mean, his, seriously, it's like national influence now um, with Chinese students. And it's amazing how God opens doors for him uh, that other people uh, just can't get through. And by doors, I mean our university campuses here uh, that other ministries aren't allowed uh, to go into. Yiji's just had open doors and he's just coming to give us a quick report and uh, then the, we've got a dessert that want to invite you to spend some more time with him tonight, right? Okay, go ahead. Hey, good morning, Grace. Um, yeah, my name is Yiji Wang. Uh, my wife, Cassie, and I were missionaries with a uh, with crew and uh, if we could, uh, yeah, so that's a picture of us and we have two pugs. So, so our, our mission work, and we share the gospel with over 300,000 Chinese students currently studying in the U.S. right now. 
So many of you are aware of the harsh spiritual reality in China. So if I could have the next slide up, please. So just give you an example. And it has, get, it has getting worse and worse since COVID. Um, so for example, the first one is that, um, so the government ordered all the churches to take down its cross. And secondly, since COVID in 2020, over 7,000 churches have been ordered to close in China. And lastly, there have been attempts to rewrite Bible passages. So these are just the harsh spiritual reality in China. And what we believe is that this group of Chinese students, perhaps they are the only people who can take the gospel back to China. So I just want to share a quick story of a student I met. Um, if I could next slide, please. And his, his name is Song, and I call him Bob for security reasons, and it's easy for you guys to pronounce. So let's call him Bob. Um, so when I first met Bob, and he was like this, he's like, don't waste your time to evangelizing me. You know, I am an atheist. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in religions. I only believe the Communist Party, and I believe Marxism. And I was like, Bob, what else would you like to talk about? And this is what he said right afterwards. He said, you are a Christian. Tell me what you believe. And I took that as an invitation to share the gospel with him. Although he didn't become a Christ, didn't become Christian on that day, he decided to come to Bible study. And six months later, he prayed to receive Christ. So after he became a Christian, thank you. <clears throat> so after he became a Christian, we really, you know, taught him how to share the gospel. He graduated last December and went back to China. When he first went back to China, he was the only Christian in his village of 45,000 people, and we call that a village. So four months later, in April today. There are over 40 believers in his village, and he leads them for worship service every Sunday morning, kind of secretly <laughs> meeting up. So yeah, so Bob's story is certainly not alone. So if I could have next slides up. It's just a couple of examples. Over you know, this past year, 2023, over 1,500 Chinese students have heard of the gospel. Three, over 300 of them pray to receive Christ, and over 200 of them, just like Bob, have since taken the gospel back to China. So, so this just give you, um, you know, a quick story, and, and I'm, you know, I'm gonna have a table out there if you like to hear more about our mission work. You're more than welcome to come and talk to me after service, and I'm also gonna have a dessert night tonight at six thirty um, at the youth center. I'll be sharing more stories of what God is doing amongst the life of Chinese students and what God's doing in China. So I'd like to invite you to come. So thank you, thank you. Thank you, Yuji. Thank you so much for the work that you're doing. So I want to encourage you that uh, this is a ministry that our church gives to, that I would encourage you to give to, to support uh, what they're doing. Pray, come 6.30 tonight and spend some time with Eugene and Cassie and uh, hear what God is doing. Also, um, just want to remind you, 6 o'clock also, another option for you is to come to that growth track. And so uh, I loved what Renell said, the word more is the right word. If you uh, believe there's more for you in serving in the kingdom, uh, that there's got to be more purpose, uh, that's a great great way to get started. So tonight, uh, we will have dinner together, and I'll talk a little bit about who we are, where we're going, you know, what this church is about, and then the next two weeks, we'll talk about you and uh, where God is taking you and uh, how you can step into more. So don't miss uh, your chance to jump into that. Also, one more announcement. So um, uh, I think it was the end of last year, the council um, voted uh, that every staff member here, uh, whether you're a janitor or the senior pastor, can have uh, take a sabbatical every seven years. And so Gene and I have been here for 17 years now, and uh, this uh, we're coming up on our second uh, sabbatical. So we're gonna take a sabbatical this summer. And uh, so you might say, well, why? And uh, I don't get to take a sabbatical, and I guess my answer would be, well, then start working for a church, and maybe you would, you know, but that's just kind of how it goes. But, um, you know, there is a real toll uh, that comes with ministry, to be honest. I mean, Gina, the other day, she was saying, yeah, I can't stand when people misunderstand me or they tell me I'm wrong or they have a conflict with the things that I'm doing. And I, I was just thinking like, yeah, I call that Tuesday, honey. I mean, that's just... That's just how it goes here. And so uh, we've been running hard. We're, I, we're not, I don't feel burned out. Um, I love uh, what I'm doing. I just feel like this is more preventative than like crisis management. In fact, I was praying to God the other day. I was like, Lord, I, I'd really like to be here for another 10 years if you would grant that to me. So my intent is to continue on, not like in crisis or anything like that, but I wanna grow and I wanna be stronger. 
and I want to be the very best pastor I can be. So we're going to take this opportunity. So what are we going to do? Well, uh, we're going to go on a family vacation uh, for about a week, and then uh, all seven of us, and so I'm excited about that. It's tough to get the adult children together, but they're, we're all coming together. And uh, then we're going, uh, Dave and Galen Horn, who were up at the YWAM base, they uh, uh, suggested that we go to this pastoral counseling retreat center in uh, Divide. We're going to do that for a week, just Gina and I. And uh, we're going to go up to Sunrise for a week and uh, do family camp up there. We've never done that in the 17 years we've been here, but love Matt and Chantal McGee and the ministry there. So want to check that out and grow together as a family. And then we'll be hanging out. And so that's kind of, that's our plan. So um, when is it will happen at the end of May and it's an eight week sabbatical. So if you have any questions, you could ask me, you could talk to any of the pastors, you can talk to one of our council members, uh, but I'm excited for that. And uh, you will be in good hands. We've got the sermons all lined up and the teachers all lined up and you'll be well taken care of while we're gone. All right. So um, I wanted to recommend to you uh, a movie that you probably did not see. And uh, the reason that you didn't see it is because it was like in our theater here for like, I don't know, a couple of days. And I just happened to kind of stumble upon it and I took my daughter to it, uh, but it was called Cabrini. And if you have a chance to see Cabrini, do. Um, and it's uh, about Mother Cabrini and uh, she comes over from Italy and uh, she's uh, coming to minister in the early 1900s to the Italian orphans. And so at that time, uh, an Italian, they were, uh, there was so much prejudice against Italians and uh, they weren't taken care of. And so she came in to do something about that. So she starts an orphanage and then she starts a hospital because Italians can't get good hospital care and medical care. So she, she launches that. And so in this movie, I mean, there's all this coming against us, you know, they firebomb her work and it's just uh, so frustrating but it has this really satisfying ending where she, you know, she perseveres, she overcomes, and she starts the hospital. And then um, she, the, the rest of the ending is amazing. I mean, she honestly, she, she started a network of hospitals around the globe. In fact, there was one in Golden, Colorado that she started. Um, and if you like, if you're driving into Denver, you see that little statue of Jesus sometimes, like right when you come in on the left-hand side, that's Mother Cabrini Shrine. She, she bought that land, and that was kind of, she was doing a thing up there. And so uh, just an amazing woman, an amazing story, and just a wonderful, satisfying ending. And so you ever see a movie that just has a horrible, unsatisfying ending? So I, I think the worst one in all of the world is Planet of the Apes with Mark Wahlberg. And so he goes and he like, he wins, right? And he fights and then he gets back in his spaceship and he comes back and he lands and crashes near the Washington Monument. We're like, yay, you won. And then he goes up to the Lincoln Memorial and guess what it is? It's Abraham Lincoln. It's not Abraham Lincoln right there. And you're like, what? This is how the thing ends? And that's, that's the end of the show. Um, so, uh, you know, a, a movie with a good ending, a satisfying ending, I think the Truman Show had a, you know, where he just kind of bows, he realizes what's going on, he kind of exits off the stage. But uh, there's a little pin and a, a theme that goes through there throughout the movie, and people are asking, how will it end? How will it end? Will it be a satisfying ending or will it be a disappointing ending? And this is, this is actually the question that I have for you this morning. How's it going to end? And uh, we're going to look at Joseph. If you don't know, there's two Josephs in the Bible. Uh, one was married to Mary, the stepfather of Jesus. And uh, this Joseph we're going to talk about was 1,900 years before that. This is one of the sons of Israel. So uh, the guy with the 12 sons, the 12 tribes come from him. And so if you have your Bible, open it up to Genesis 37. We're going to be in uh, around these uh, chapters here for the most of the morning. So uh, Genesis 37, we see now Israel, so that's Joseph's dad, loved Joseph. This is uh, 37 verse 3, Genesis 37 3, sorry about that. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons. So you got trouble right there because he had been born to him in his old age. The other thing is because he came from the wife that uh, Israel loved better. And when you have two wives, it's going to be a problem no matter what. So here comes the problems. And uh, he made a richly ornamented robe for him. And when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him. And they could not speak a kind word to him. Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. And he said to them, listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. And then he has this other dream about stars, and it's the same thing. It's basically like, you guys are going to bow down to me. I'm going to be in charge. And that doesn't make his brothers really happy. 
And, and you know, this idea right there, I mean, they hated him. They couldn't speak a kind word to him. Right at the beginning, we have this family rejection and this family pain. And you know, those, those pain points that you picked up from your family, they're powerful, aren't they? And it's amazing. That, I mean, if there's something that's gonna lodge into your heart, it happens when you were a kid with your family of origin. Gina and I, we were ministering to a man a number of years ago. I think he was in his late 60s. And I mean, he was in my office just shaking and weeping over the pain that his brother gave to him when he was eight years old. Still carrying it six decades later. See, this family pain, it's a kind of pain that just stays with you. And why? Well, because this is, these are the years that this is formation, right? I mean, you hold a little baby, and what's that little baby saying to you as he's looking at you? Like, teach me. Teach me about the world. And see, some of you, your parents, you know, the, the things that you were taught, they, they, weren't, they weren't true. They were the wrong lessons. They were lies. And you were vulnerable. And at that time, I mean, if pain comes when you're vulnerable, it just has so much power. It actually forms who you are in many ways. Now, parents, I, I want to encourage you. You can't be perfect. And I, I'm at peace with the, the fact that I have messed up with all four of my daughters on multiple occasions. And I've had to go to them and just say, you know what, I'm sorry. Yeah, I did that wrong. And I'm probably going to have to do it again. And so I, I don't want you to have this burden like, oh, you know, I, I did this wrong. Yeah, you did some things wrong. There, there's no doubt about it. But if you have kids, I just want you to be aware, or if you're going to have kids, I want you to be aware of the power and the influence that you have, the impact that you have. And so I actually did a little uh, research. Uh, Calvin, who's a licensed counselor, helped me on this a little bit. And um, I was looking at, okay, what about the impact that parents can have on their kids? And so maybe, go ahead and bring that slide up. You may have received some of these things. And so it's not always, I mean, this isn't just like neat categories, but this is a possibility of what can happen. So if, for example, your parents were absent, it's, it's quite possible that you became an unconnected adult. Or if you are an angry parent, uh, it's possible that right now you are raising fearful and anxious adults. I mean, it has an impact. Or maybe um, your parents were emotionally unavailable. Well, if so, don't be surprised that you are always trying to prove that you are worthy and that you have worth. I mean, that's what often comes. Or if you're a controlling parent, well, be careful because you might be raising adults who are struggling with their decisions and they don't really understand boundaries as they go forward. And of course, uh, so devastating, if you had an abusive parent, you were ra uh, they were raising an untrusting adult. Now, that's not always going to work out exactly like that. And many of you would say, well, yeah, I went underneath some of those things. I had that. And, you know, what came for me was I'm angry. And, and I think anger would fit for all of them. But I think anger is a secondary emotion, actually. I think that anger often is rooted in something else like fear or sadness. And, and then, you know, the way that we express it is anger. And you just have to know that, that what you were given, I mean, even if your parents were really, really good, that most of us, I think all of us, have some pain points there. There's just some things that have lodged in our hearts and things that we have to deal with. I mean, does anyone here have any family pain? And I guess my question for you is, how does it end? What are we gonna do? All right, so let's look at Joseph. And I hate to say it, but before it gets better, it gets worse. And so we'll look over at uh, 23 here. And so um, Joseph goes out to check on his brothers, usually to kind of tattle on them. Uh, and it's Genesis 37, 23. So it says, when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the richly ornamented robe he was wearing. They took him and they threw him into the cistern, a big well. Now the cistern was empty and there was no water in it. And as they sat down to eat their meal, they looked up and saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead. Their camels were loaded with spices, balm, and myrrh, and they were on their way to take them down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, What will we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come, let's sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him. After all, he is our brother. Yeah, great job, Judah. Uh, our own flesh and blood, and his brothers agreed. So it's one thing to not be liked by uh, your uh, brothers or sisters, uh, your siblings. It's another thing to be sold into slavery by them. And I would imagine uh, there was some pain there and some hurt. I mean, have you ever been rejected? No, have you ever just been kind of unincluded or dropped off? You know, you thought you were part of it, and it's like, wait a second, where's my invitation? You know, I thought these people were my friends. 
You know, let me tell you one thing that does not bring conclusion to your pain. One thing that doesn't bring healing is when you say, and it's okay to say this, but you say, well, others have it worse. Now, that's true. And you know, that is a great statement for going forward. You know, others have it worse. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna gut it out. I'm gonna keep grinding. Others have it worse. Yeah, that's true. But you know what? That's not really a healing statement. That really doesn't take care of the problem. I mean, it's true. Others have it worse, no doubt. And you know what? Here's something else that's true. Others have it better. So, for example, divorce. Divorce has probably touched some way every single person in this room. Super common, right? But does that mean that it doesn't hurt? If your parents were divorced, was it painful? Well, everybody's are, right? So what? I mean, it's still your pain. And it doesn't matter that it's common. It still affects you. Your pain is your pain. And yes, some have it worse and some have it better. It really doesn't matter. Your pain is your pain. I was thinking, I asked Nia if I could share this with you. When she was little, she was just the cutest little thing. She had this big afro, and, but she was, she was afraid, uh, just like any kind of scratch or blood, she would just freak out. You know, like this little tiny cut. She's like, ah. I'm like, I can't even see it. Let me get my glass, you know, and you'd put a little bandaid on. And so I had this idea, like I was trying to get her like, it's okay, it's no big deal. And so I'm working on uh, the sprinkler, and it's like I have my chance right now. And so Naya was kind of in the yard playing. I'm working on the sprinkler, and I cut my hand really good. And now I look back on this, and this was a bad idea. But I thought it was a good idea at the time, okay? And so I, I thought, well, I'm going to show her that it's no big deal. And I mean, my hand was covered in blood, right? And she's, I was like, hey, Naya, look, I cut my hand. And her eyes like pop out of her head, literally. So this is exactly what she did. She turned around, she started running to the door and as she's running, she says, this isn't happening. (laughs) It's like, oh, that didn't work. (laughs) My pain didn't really help her pain. Her pain is her pain. Your pain is your pain. So we look at Joseph and I hate to say it, but before it gets better, it's gonna get worse. So let's go over to 39. Verse 11, so um, Joseph, he rises up into Potiphar's uh, house, and so he's a slave, but he's doing so well that he becomes, he's put in charge of everything, of this Egyptian official. And so, um, let's see, we'll pick up at verse 11, and the problem is that Potiphar's wife keeps coming on to Joseph, and he keeps resisting and keeps resisting, but it reaches a crescendo here in verse 11 of chapter 39. And it says, one day Joseph went into the house to attend to his duties. And none of the household servants was inside. So she, that's Potiphar's wife, caught him by the cloak and said, come to bed with me. But he left his cloak in her hand and he ran out of the house. And when she saw that he had left his cloak in her hand and had run out of the house, she called her household servants. Look, she said to them, this Hebrew has been brought to us to make sport of us. He came in here to sleep with me, but I screamed. And when he heard me scream for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. And then he is thrown into prison because of doing the right thing. I mean, Joseph couldn't have done it more righteously. And here he is, what does he get? Yeah, I've got a friend who was telling me the other day that uh, at his uh, work site, that when things go well for someone, they, always, they say, ah, well, you must be living right. You must be, you know what? It doesn't work that way. Matthew 5, 45 says that the sun shines on the good and the sun shines on the evil. It says that the rain comes on the righteous and the rain comes on the unrighteous. And you can do the right thing and it can go worse for you. I mean, have you ever been wrongfully accused? Isn't that horrible? Have you ever, like, you've been trying to do one thing, and people interpret what you do the exact opposite of what you were, you know, like, I was, I was actually doing the opposite of that. That's happened to me a number of times. I was actually trying not to do what you're saying right now. And there's been other times where, like, I'm going to love this guy back to life. Man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just show him the love of Jesus. And I reach out, and I care, and I invest, and I invest. And then that's, like, the one who, like, turns on you, Right? That's the one who like stabs you in the back. Like, oh, after all I've tried to do. It's painful. It's painful to be accused. It's painful to be misunderstood. And just changes the whole relationship. And if you've been wrongly judged, if you've been attacked, if you've been just kind of thrown to the side, I guess the question I have for you is, is how's it going to end? What are we going to do? All right. Well, we're getting to the end here. 
for Joseph. And so he gets uh, promoted. Uh, actually, he goes to prison for a while, and then um, he gets uh, pulled out of prison. He runs into some guys who know the king or the pharaoh, and they recommend him eventually after forgetting him for a little while. He gets recommended to pharaoh. And uh, then he goes and he interprets this dream for pharaoh. And basically, the dream says that, uh, well, there's going to be a bunch of famine, and uh, then, well, there's going to be a bunch of uh, uh, good times, and then there's going to be some famine, and you've got to get ready for the famine. And so uh, he tells uh, Pharaoh all about this, and Pharaoh says, well, why don't you take care of this? You're in charge. And so he actually becomes uh, the second most powerful man in all of Egypt. And so he's in charge of distributing all these uh, goods and resources and this famine, it strikes the whole land. I mean, all over the whole region. And so people are coming from all over. In fact, they come from Israel, the land of Canaan, to go get some help. And so his brothers eventually run out of food and they come and they ask Joseph for some food. Now they don't know it's Joseph. And Joseph's playing along. He pretends that he doesn't even speak Hebrew. And, um, but then there comes this moment, and you gotta read it, it's so good. I don't have time to go into all of it right now. But in chapter 43, 44, you could read all about it. And we're gonna pick up in chapter 45, where Joseph finally reveals, hey, I'm the guy in charge, and I'm the one that you sold. So let's look at 45, verse one. It says, then Joseph could no longer control himself before all his attendants, and he cried out, have everyone leave my presence. So there was no one with Joseph when he made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him, and Pharaoh's household heard about it. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified at his presence. I mean, he has the power to execute them right now. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come close to me. And when they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourself for selling me here. Now this is just amazing. Because this next statement is just like, you know, when you bring Jesus into your pain, he helps you completely reframe the whole thing. I mean, you can see it a whole different way. This is an incredible statement. Because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. Wow. Wow, what a way to look at this. For two years now, there has been famine in the land, and for the next five years, there will not be plowing and reaping. But God sent me ahead of you, this is incredible, to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So then, it was not you who sent me here, but God, wow. He made me father to Pharaoh, lord of this entire household and ruler of all Egypt. Now hurry back to my father and say to him, this is what your son Joseph says. God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, don't delay. You shall live in the region of Goshen and be near me. You, your children, grandchildren, your flocks and herds and all you have, I will provide for you there because five years of famine are still to come. Otherwise, you and your household and all who belong to you will become destitute. Wow. This is how the pain, this is how it ends for Joseph. And see, this is actually how your pain point can end as well. And so I want to talk about how it ends for you, okay? Or how it could end. And so the first thing that we see Joseph do is he faces it. Look, if you want to work through it, if you want to be free of it, if you don't want to be defined by it anymore, you've got to come to terms with it. And, and it says, then Joseph can no longer control himself. It's time, it's another way of saying it is time to face this. And see, here's the problem with your pain points. They're complicated. I know it, I've got them, right? And, and there's things that were done to you, but there's kind of things that you did in the middle of it, and it's just kind of messy. And often there's like shame all around it. And, and then there's people who are involved that like decades later are still acting the exact same way. You know, when we go on this family vacation with my adult children, one of the things that I'm going to have to work really, really hard at is that there's just this thing. When we all get together, it's just so easy for everybody to kind of get back into their old roles, right? I mean, now these are adults, and I have to, I mean, I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight to let them be who they are and not to try to put everybody back into their old things, but it's just so easy to kind of fall back into that stuff, isn't it? Or maybe the, the problem, it's just been going, it's so old, like, it, what are you going to do about it anymore? So what we do is we run, or we stuff, or we hide, or we pretend. You know, we just kind of soldier on. Well, other people have it worse. 
And if that's you, I guess, you know what my prayer for you is today? I pray that you, like Joseph, can no longer control it. I pray that you get to a place where it's like, okay, something has to be done. I'm gonna face it. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have a big family meeting. Maybe you do. But really, what, what it does mean, I'm sure of, is that you have to acknowledge what took place and how it impacted you. Now, in some ways, I think about even the pain that I've gone through. It's like, it makes me who I am, right? There's good and bad. But just seeing it, it it's just massive. It is so big to just see it. To be able to say, oh, I get it now. That's why I always freak out whenever I feel betrayed. That's why I always overreact when people try to control me. Or that's why I'm so controlling, right? That's why, that's why I reject people before they have a chance to reject me. That's why I'm always pushing people off. I get it now. I understand that. That's massive. Just to face it and start to gain some of that understanding. But then, then we get to the big thing. And I told you a few weeks ago that we're going to need to talk about it, and today's the day we're going to talk about it. So here's the big thing, is we need to forgive the offense. It's massive. It's huge. So Joseph, he says, come close. Don't be angry with yourself. And I want you to understand that forgiveness is the way to freedom. If you look at Matthew 6, 14, Jesus talks about this. And after the Lord's Prayer, he says, for if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Now, I want you to understand this is not a salvation issue. Okay, this is a freedom issue. This, okay, think about mercy like just this massive river. And God, he has this river of grace and mercy that he just wants to flood your life with. And, he, and it's, it's a good one. It's just he wants you to bask in this, all right? But then think of unforgiveness. It's kind of like a dam. It's a door. And all this mercy comes, and boom, it stops right there. Because you're saying, you know what, God, you can touch any part of my life with your mercy and grace, but this part right here, mm -mm. right? The unforgiveness is basically a closed door to the work of God in your life. And so all this mercy wants to come and it just stops. And this issue, there is no mercy, there is no grace because you won't allow it because of your unforgiveness. But then you make this decision, okay, I'm gonna forgive. And the mercy and the grace just comes flooding in your heart and it floods out to everybody involved and God just pours on salvation, grace, life, kingdom because you've chosen forgiveness. So let me explain a little bit of what forgiveness is not. Forgiveness is not saying, that's okay. Listen, it wasn't okay. It was wrong. It was not okay. Whatever happened was not okay. So it's not saying it was okay. It's not forgetting. Whoever said for, uh, forgive and forget, they never forgave anything. You can't, I mean, you're gonna remember. Now you can reframe it, you can look at it differently. It'll have a different impact on you but you're not going to forget it. And it's also, this is a big one, it is not throwing out healthy boundaries. It's not saying, well, I forgave him, so now I got to go get beat up by him again. Wrong. So there's some people in my life that I've got some really strong boundaries with. And, and I have forgiven them. I'm not angry. I don't hate. I'm not mad. But it's like, oh, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to go there. That's not a safe place to be, right? So what is Forgiveness. It's releasing your right to hate. It's release, and, and see, instead of always holding this thing out in front of you whenever you think of them, it's to say, okay, th this is not, I'm not gonna hold this against them anymore. I heard a guy once talk about forgiveness and I loved his idea. He said, you know what you should do is get a, get a bill and, and just write on it like everything that they owe you. You know, they took my childhood, they took my innocence um, and they owe me an apology and, and they owe me this and they owe me that. And so you write it all down and then just on the bottom, just write paid in full. Cross is enough. So it's saying, I'm, they don't owe me anything anymore. The bill is paid. I'm not gonna worry about it. Now, let me tell you what forgiveness is. Okay, this is gonna surprise you. It's not a feeling, it's a choice. Forgiveness is actually a decision. 
And so I can't tell you how many people I've led through this. I've been led through this myself. I've gone through this a number of times. This is a powerful, powerful thing. I should have brought some testimonies up to tell you about how people are forgiven. It's amazing. And I've got some steps in your bulletin to help you with this, okay? And so you can take this home, and we're going to actually just going to practice this right once right now, and then you're ready. Then you'll be equipped to do this on your own. Okay, so the first step is you identify the specific offense. It has to be specific. Do you know why? Because a specific thing put a specific splinter in your heart, and you have to pull out that specific splinter. It does not work to, to say, oh, I forgive my brother for being a big jerk. It's just like, that, that doesn't help. You have to actually have to go back to the specific things that your brother did that were jerkish, okay? Like, what did he do? And so I'm actually going to ask right now, let, let's just, let's practice this, okay? So let, let's just ask God to show us if there's anybody we need to forgive, okay? So, so just pray this prayer. Close your eyes. Pray your, this prayer. Say, Holy Spirit, is there anyone I need to forgive? Okay, for some of you, it came just, I mean, you didn't even have to even pray the prayer. Uh, others, uh, nothing's come yet. It's okay. We're just going to, you, you'll know how to do it when it comes, all right? And so now, this is, I want you to pray this. So um, it has to be a specific thing, right? So, so let's ask this. Uh, Holy Spirit, what specific thing do I need to forgive? And I want to encourage you, if right now you're telling yourself it's silly, it's not, okay? Or if it's no big deal, and actually it is a big deal. That's why God's bringing it to mind. Okay, so there's a specific thing that happens, that's something they said, something they did, the specific moment, all right? Now here's the next thing that you do, is you take inventory. Okay, what happened? What did they do? Now, sometimes it helps to think down, why did they do it? I don't know why they would do it. I, I mean, sometimes it helps to figure that out a little bit. But, but what was lost? Now think about that right now. What did they take from you? What is owed to you? What do you want from them? Do you want an apology? Do you want them to finally wake up? Do you want them to be embarrassed? I mean, what, 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 what do they owe you? What did they take from you? Your joy, your peace, your innocence, your childhood? Think a little bit on that. Ask God to show you. All right, now the next thing is, I personally believe that real forgiveness is supernatural. And I, I personally believe that a sin can't be completely dealt with until it comes to the blood of Jesus, until it comes to the cross. So the next step is, just pray for help. You, it's fine to say, God, I don't want to forgive them. Will you help me forgive them? Lord, will you help me to forgive? Just, just pray right now, God, help me to forgive them for this thing. Help me to really forgive them. Okay, now we're coming to the hard part. And that is we make a choice. Okay, it's not a feeling, it's a choice. And uh, I'll tell you, there's just something powerful about speaking it aloud, to declare it. See, the, see because when you do that, you know that you're making a choice. You're, you, God knows that you're making a choice. I mean, you were just declaring it to everyone. I am making this choice. And so I wanna encourage you right now that we're gonna come and we're just gonna speak it aloud. And, if, and you know, it's like I've seen, I can't tell you how many people I've seen, they get to this point and they just, like, <clears throat> they just can't say it because they know it's a choice. They know it's actually, this is the act of letting go. It's kind of like when you come up to the altar, you know, you kneel, you lay it down. This is the moment. This is where you come and meet God by speaking it aloud, all right? So, but this is how we do it. And I want to encourage you. There's, there's just nothing but freedom for you. There's nothing but grace and mercy that comes. So this is what you do for this specific thing. You say, I forgive you, whoever they are. You don't have to call them up. You can do this right now between you and God. In fact, sometimes you call them up. You're like, hey, I just want to let you know I forgave you for that time you did that. And they're like, oh, I didn't even know you were mad about it. You're like, oh, okay, never mind. Right? So I mean, this is just right now. You're making this choice and you're declaring it to yourself. You're declaring it to God.
So you say this, I forgive you, Fred, for the time that you took credit for all the work I did and got the promotion, okay? And that's it, just that specific thing. And that just so you can whisper it, so people around you don't have to hear. But I, I wanna encourage you right now just to speak it. Say, okay, I forgive you, you put in the name, for when you, whatever they did, that specific thing, you're just choosing right now, I forgive you. I forgive you, Dad, for when you said that, when you called me stupid. I forgive you, Mom, for how you like went crazy every time we would uh, not put our clothes away. Just speak it, whisper it, just whisper it to God. All right, good job. Now, here's the next thing. Ask God what he has for you instead. So all this was taken from you. You know, that person took something from you. God's got good gifts for you. Now, Lord, I'm walking in what you've given me. I'm walking in your truth. What do you have instead? Just, say, just ask him, say, Holy Spirit, what do you have instead? And he's gonna tell you things like peace, joy, freedom, life. Just go ahead and ask him. All right, one last step. Bless the offender. So that could be, hey, you know, I just want to let you know I love you. It's just acting in the opposite of what you're given. For, for some of us, the very best we'll be able to do is just to pray for them. Lord, I pray that you help them not be so mean. Okay, that's fine. Just act in the opposite. So if you want to pray for them right now, pray blessing on that person. All right, Lord, bless them. Amen. Good job. Now, what do you do now? Well, here's the thing is you may need to do that a number of times. You, even for one specific thing, you may need to choose over and over again. Just kind of repeat that cycle. And there's going to be a time, and you know how you're going to know that you've forgiven? When you think about it, you don't feel shame and you don't feel anger. And those are two little lights that come on your dashboard. And see, what God is going to do after you've learned to do this, uh, you're going you're gonna to feel anger and you're going to feel shame when you think about specific things. And that's God's way of saying, hey, we've got a little work to do. So when that anger, that shame comes for a specific thought, then you go through this process and you forgive it and you choose it and you find life and you find freedom and that's how it ends. All right? So I'd encourage you just to keep going until you are free. And listen, some of you may need help. There's some big ones. There's some doozies. And I'd be happy to walk through that with you. Gina does that all the time. Calvin can do it. Number of people on staff. We're all ready and experienced in helping people walk through forgiveness. So if you need help, set up a time with me and, let, and let's do it. And, and, and God's gonna bring freedom to you, all right? All right, a few more steps to make it in. The next one is invite God into it. You invite God into this thing now, into your pain. So I love this in Genesis 50, 20. So Israel dies and all the brothers are like, okay, now we're gonna get it. Dad's not here to, to hold Joseph back. And it's amazing. He, he says, it's probably, it's one of the best statements in the Bible. And he says, what you used for evil, guys, I just want you to know God used for good. It's so powerful. You sold me, you did all this stuff to me and what you intended for evil, God used for good. So one of the things that, that I'll often ask someone when they're working through forgiveness, I'll just say, hey, you know, just go back there for just a moment, and I just want to ask you, where was Jesus? Where, where was Jesus when your dad was drunk that day? What do you think Jesus was doing? And just invite Jesus into it. And here's an, uh, just as an important question. Where is Jesus now? Right? My mom was so harsh. Maybe you'd say that. Well, well then, okay, Jesus, Father, would you come and nurture me? W would you teach me your gentleness? If you've learned, if, if when you were vulnerable, they taught you to be harsh, then go on a quest to learn the gentleness of God. Find out what your father's really like. My dad was so angry. Okay, well then, Father, teach me your patience. Teach me safety. Teach me who you really are. Show me. I mean, go on a quest to find the Father heart of God. Invite Jesus into this. When I, was, uh, when I first got into college, 
I got this, um, I got this book on uh, how to fix a Subaru for complete idiots. Because I, I didn't know how, to, I, but I didn't, I didn't have any money. You know, I didn't know how to fix a car, but I didn't have any money, so I was in a bind. So I get this book, and I, I'm replacing like an O-ring for, I don't even know what the part was. But I do remember that I had to build this little socket thing that like had all these different sockets, and I could just kind of click it once, you know, one at a time, like click, click, click. Took me forever to get the part off, put the O-ring in, put it back on, click, click, click. And I remember, I remember saying, I'm just going to do it one more time. And I went click, and the bolt went pow, and I snapped the bolt. And I freaked out. I'm like, Aah! and I freaked out because it triggers me. I'm like, no one ever taught me how to do any of these things. I'm always alone, rah, 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 you know, and just freaking out about the whole thing. You know, and, and it, that often happens to me when it's like, oh, why didn't someone teach me how to do this? I've got a, a friend, um, so he's in his 30s. And I think I was, I don't know, probably in my 50s. I'd like to say I was in my 40s when uh, I learned that. I was today years old, right, when I finally learned this. And um, he, uh, he said, you know, when, when I struggle with things like that, when, when I'm having these difficulties, I just pray, Father, Father me. And so I've been doing that. And it's like, it's a game changer. Like I get frustrated. I'm like, Father, Father me. First thing it does is it calms me down. Next thing is I start to think instead of being an idiot and I, I go to YouTube and I get some help or, or God just gives me a solution, you know? And it's like, wow, thank you. And, and so what I'm saying is just whatever it is, pursue and understand the heart of God, especially in the places where you lack it. What is God really like? All right. And the final thing here is agree with who you are in Christ. Agree with who you really are. God is a game changer and a name changer. I love this. He takes Abram. He says, Abram, yeah, that's a pretty good name. It means father. But you know what? I'm going to take you, Abram, and I'm going to call you Abraham, which means father of multitudes. It's like he takes what's here and he multiplies it. He makes it better and makes it bigger. He makes it more beautiful. He takes Hosea and he says, hey, yeah, Hosea, that means salvation. That's pretty good. But you know what? I'm going to call you Joshua. Not just salvation, but Yahweh saves. So he takes what's there and he makes it powerful. Isaiah 62, 4 says that he will change your name. He gives you a new name. And I want to I challenge you right now. Okay, now that you've gone through this, now we're bringing Jesus into this. Stop agreeing with the lies and the labels of your pain. I'm alone. I'm unwanted. I'm an idiot. I'm unable to connect. I'm ugly. I'm better off dead. I'm annoying. I'm all lies. It's all the enemy. Why would you want to agree with the enemy? Psalm 8, he says that you were, God made you a little lower than the angels. The NASB says a little lower than God himself. That's who you are. So how does it end? I'll tell you how it ends. It ends now. It ends right now with redemption. And it ends with renewal. And it ends with a restart. And it ends with the facing it and forgiving it and inviting God into it and agreeing with who you are in Jesus. It ends by you bringing this pain before your father, you laying it at his feet and saying, you know what, it's not gonna define me anymore. Now you are, father. Father, father me. I don't care how good your dad was. Father, father me. Show me. Show me who you are and what you're about. Change me, transform me. And then he comes and he changes you. And he changes your name and he changes your identity. And you still have the memory and, and the pain was still there, but, but it has a different power over you. It means a different thing in your life now because God redeems it. God sets you free from it. And yeah, God will even use it. Your misery becomes your ministry. So Father, thank you. Thank you that what you have is redemption. Lord, what you have is restoration. What you have is healing. No matter how good or bad our parents were, no matter what, what the, how little or big our pain is, God, that, that what you want is freedom and wholeness and life for us. So we invite you, Lord, into these pain points. And God, we're ready now. We're ready for it to end. And in that, well, we believe that there's just life, that there's freedom, there's reframing. God, there's a new name and a new identity. And so we receive that. We receive all that you have for us in Jesus' name. Amen.
thank you that we are no longer defined by our pain Lord we're no longer defined by what they have said and God we thank you that you have made us full children and Lord even though we can't fix it Lord even though we can't change them your blood Jesus is enough your blood is enough for them but your blood is enough for us and so Lord I just ask you would cover this Lord with your blood you cover it with your redemption and your grace. You are a God of grace, mercy, resurrection, and restoration. So bring it to our hearts and bring it to our lives and let us walk in that freedom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Love you guys so much. If you need more prayer, come on up here. We want to pray for you. If there's something that you just can't forgive, listen, that, that's your prison. And we want to see you get free. So come and set up some time with me and uh, let us pray through that for you and help you. Love you guys. Sunday, same time. Love you guys.